Hello, I am Nathan Martin with DivinePollination.com, and I'd like to answer the question, what is consciousness? There's so many people that talk about consciousness, like, I'm a conscious individual, I'm a conscious person, we need to be more conscious. But what exactly does that mean? It's, it's really become this big buzzword, and people use it all the time in, uh, in various things, and it's maybe even a marketing term. Uh, a lot of spiritual circles use it all the time as well. But what does consciousness actually mean? When, you know, when it is applied into your life, what does it mean to be a conscious individual? What does it mean to be a conscious person? What does it mean to develop your consciousness? First of all, from an emotional perspective, in the hive at least, in the Divine Pollination Hive, we view consciousness as awareness. Awareness is the opposite of guilt and judgment. So when awareness was in unity, it was aware. And when it was flipped outside in, it became judgment and guilt. And when you look at guilt, guilt is that feeling of doing an action wrong. You've made a mistake in your actions. You've done wrong actions. You should feel guilty for those actions. And now you have to go before a judge, and a judge is now going to decide whether or not you are guilty or innocent. So guilt and judgment are two aspects of the same coin. When mashed back into one, they become awareness. When we start developing our awareness, we are going inside, we're going within to understand ourselves. So one of the big key aspects of awareness is being able to understand. And you understand by asking why. Why is my life like this? Why do I do that? Why do I do this? Why is this manifesting in front of me? Why is that person acting this way towards me? Why am I triggered right now? Why am I so angry? Why am I sad? Why am I afraid? Asking why from an emotional perspective develops awareness. And the more aware you become, the more you can start making conscious choices and decisions to change your life. But if you don't understand why things are as they are, then you're not really conscious. You're unconscious. You're unconscious in your patterns. You're repeating these patterns blindly. You have no idea why you act. You're completely in judgment of others or in guilt. So you're either judging and condemning or you're feeling guilty for people judging and condemning you. But you have absolutely no awareness why you act, why you do what you do. And so from our perspective, consciousness is awareness. From a different angle, we're going to look at it as patterns. When you are conscious, you are able to determine, able to view, to see patterns, patterns playing out. Everything in the world is patterns. A lot of people say that we are living in this big hologram and that everything is a fractal and the way things play out are played out in fractal patterns. Uh, that's a possibility for sure. But consciousness is the ability to discern patterns to view the patterns. So somebody who is of higher consciousness can see the patterns that are playing out in any given scenario. They can watch the news. They can see the patterns. They can uh, view any argument and they can see the patterns. They can view why they're acting the way they act. Again, there's that why again. And they can understand their patterns. So they're looking at their emotional relating patterns. They're looking at the relationships between different things, the relationship between them and somebody else, the relationship between masculine and feminine, the relationship between their light side and their shadow side. And they're able to discern these patterns and look at these patterns and understand these patterns. So consciousness is the ability to look at patterns and then do something with them. Because if you can't see the pattern of what is actually going on, then you're going to blindly, unconsciously repeat them. But the more that you start seeing the patterns in life, the more that you can make changes to your life. If you're not conscious and you don't make these changes, you're going to blindly repeat them. So consciousness in this regard is the ability to see patterns and then make changes based on those patterns. Another pattern that can be looked at by a conscious individual is the relationship between the source and the mirror. So if the mirror is that which gets feedback, the source is the one that looks into the mirror to receive the feedback. So in all relationships, there is always a source and a mirror. There is the person who is uh, acting, and then there is the mirror that is reflecting it. 
So if I am the source and I look into the mirror and I say, oh, look at me, that is what I look like. Now I can get feedback about myself. Now if I look into the mirror and I say, I don't like what I see when I look into that mirror. I do not like me whatsoever. I'm going to change the mirror. I'm going to, maybe let's say this mirror is a girlfriend. I'm going to dump this girlfriend. I'm going to find myself a new girlfriend. That's what I'm going to do. Now that I have a new girlfriend, now I can do it better because this person can reflect back to me something better than what this other, the, the last one was reflecting to me. Unfortunately, this is not very conscious because all I'm doing is changing the mirror rather than changing the person who's looking into the mirror. The most important thing we can do when we look into the mirror is analyze ourselves, look at our own patterns and then make changes to ourselves. Everything that happens in our life is a feedback mechanism. It is a mirror. So uh, if I have a certain relationship pattern, uh, a relationship manifestation, I could look at that. So let's look at an example. Let's say it's about my relationship and I replace one girlfriend for the next girlfriend. Now in this new girlfriend, oh, there's the cats. <laughs> in this new girlfriend, I have certain manifestations that happen. Now I can look at those manifestations that happen and I can say, huh, you know, this is something that I don't like. I need to get rid of that girlfriend and get a new girlfriend again. But what they're doing is they're reflecting back to me something about me. Maybe it's the distance. Maybe it's my financial situation. Maybe it's the way that we communicate. All these different things are different aspects, reflections of the source looking into the mirror. I am the source. They are the reflections of me. My money situation is a reflection of who I am. The clothes that I wear are a reflection of who I am. Where I live is a reflection of who I am. If I have a car or not is a reflection of who I am. Now, I can try to go and change the mirror and, well, I need to work harder and get a new car. Or I need to change this about my girlfriend or change this about other people. But you're not really changing the person looking in the mirror. And that doesn't just mean changing your actions. It's looking at the causes to change your effects. Far too many people are looking at their life from the effect level and not the cause level. And if they are looking at the cause level, they're not going back far enough into the cause. They're still looking at an effect of a cause. So it's very important to start looking at the root causes in your life and to go back enough into the causes rather than just looking at your effects. So if I have a manifestation, that is an effect. So uh, let's say I, I break my leg. That is an effect, not the cause. You know, the car accident that broke my leg, that also is an effect. That is not the cause. If you start looking at your emotional patterns of relating, let's say before I got in the car accident and broke my leg, I was in an argument uh, with my, my girlfriend. And as a result of that argument with my girlfriend, I was into this, this mindset and then I crashed. The important thing is then to look at the pattern of the argument. What were you arguing about? What were you feeling when you argued? How does this relate to your childhood? Where in your childhood did this happen last? What were you feeling in your childhood? What are the other times that you've repeated this pattern? Did you ever get hurt when you were repeating this pattern? What were the messages that the pattern gave? So that's an important part of looking for the patterns. Again, consciousness is the ability to look for the patterns in the root causes. It's looking at causality. If you remember the uh, Merovingian in the movie The Matrix, uh, the second movie, Matrix, he was always talking about causality. Causality. He had this nice French accent, causality. Anyways, it, that was a very important speech and a very esoteric piece of information on looking at cause and effect. So many people do not look for cause. They only go after effect. Well, I was in a car accident because that guy cut me off and he caused the car accident. No, it, it just goes beyond that. You're not even asking the right questions. Ask why more. Go deeper. If you want to blindly repeat patterns, then believe that that was because the guy cut you off. You're not very conscious. You're not very aware. What were you feeling that before the accident happened? What kinds of patterns? What is the result of the car accident? What kind of feelings did you have as a result besides just pain? Like, ow. But what, what kinds of things were going in your life? Is this a financial burden on you? Did you get fired from work because of the accident? Start looking at all the patterns and the experiences, the manifestations in your life as a reflection and you are the source that is this is reflecting and then you can start looking into that and determining the root causes so that you can then 
change your root causes and have new effects. It doesn't mean like, oh, well, next time I better wear my seatbelt. No, that's not what we're talking about. That's not, again, not a root cause. That is also an effect. You, you wear a seatbelt to manage the effect, to prevent yourself, to keep yourself safe because you are not conscious. You don't understand. You're not aware. You don't ask why. Now, once we get to that point where we are a conscious creator, we don't need to worry about things like safety or freedom because we're always safe. We're always free. We're sovereign individuals because we are conscious and we understand because we have gone back. We understand causality. We go back far enough. We look for root causes. We clear them. So this is what consciousness is all about. It's about the ability to discern patterns and then make course corrections at the root causes in your life. You can use your feelings, which is awareness, and the duality versions of awareness or consciousness is judgment and guilt. If you are being judgmental or if you feel guilty, you are not being conscious and you're not aware. You are not looking for the patterns. You're in blame or you're being blamed. Another consideration about consciousness is it is possible to be a dark individual, as in somebody who is service to self, selfish, and only concerned about your own survival needs, and still be conscious. It is the ability to see patterns that makes you conscious. Consciousness doesn't make you good or bad, light or dark, or something like that. The consciousness of the individual can be used and wielded to mindfuck others. You can be conscious of the patterns and make conscious decisions and choices to consciously harm people, to consciously manipulate them, to consciously do things with your knowledge, with your understanding. Because you understand cause and effect, you can do things and manipulate people in ways that they might not understand because they do not know cause and effect. They do not have consciousness. And so consciousness in and of itself is not good or bad. It can be used as a tool by either and by anybody on any scale of gray. You can be very conscious, very awake, and in many cases uh, harm other people. It is a very conscious thing. So being conscious is not morally superior. An immoral person can also wield consciousness. So I want you to remember that. Consciousness is not uh, your bozo button or your prize for having arrived. It is not your proof that you're a really good person. What it is, is it is a tool that you can utilize in your life. Now, if you're a very uh, loving person, very service to others, you know when I say service to others, I mean you're not going to harm somebody else. You're very sovereign. You respect other people as sovereign beings. Then you're going to treat other people and you're going to use your consciousness. You're going to wield your consciousness for the betterment of other people and also for yourself. You start with yourself, but then you also use your consciousness for others. Now, somebody who is also conscious but is more selfish, uh, maybe some people might call them a darker individual, but dark is really just a polarity, but for this sake, we'll use dark. Now, they might also use this to manipulate, to consciously manipulate because they understand patterns to get their way. That is the dark side of consciousness. So consciousness is a tool to be wielded by the individual. How we choose to use our consciousness, our understanding of ourself, our patterns, our motivations is up to us. I'm Nathan Martin with the Divine Pollination Hive at divinepollination.com and theunityprocess.com. Be well.